Everyone, Pastor Mike here at New Life Church. I'm sorry we couldn't be together due to the severe weather that's coming in our area for our night of redemption. But hopefully uh, through this opportunity of, of video, we can um, be together virtually. Uh, this is not going to be a professional um, video, but it is hopefully going to be a meaningful way to walk through Holy Thursday, uh, Good Friday, so that we might um, be thoughtful as we approach Easter. Uh, through this uh, time together, our hope is to spend some time in the upper room and also in the garden and then at the cross. In each section, we want to hear words of scripture, a brief message, and then a song of reflection uh, by Victor Neal and Maria Maxwell. I hope that you'll take the opportunity to um, take a look at the lyrics and sing along where you are that this might be a time of worship. Well, let's begin in the upper room together. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 17 to 30, it says this, On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make prefer preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him. The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, One after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Now, friends, um, this word betrayal comes to mind um, this year for me as we look at this passage. Something each year seems to stick out, and, and this is the piece that has stuck out to me. As we've been talking about uh, these giants that must fall, for me in this passage, the giant that must fall is our agenda. Betrayal has been defined, one definition is to deliver something or someone over to an enemy. And Jesus wasn't performing the way that, Jesus, that Judas thought that Jesus ought to perform. And uh, he was not installing the kind of kingdom that, that he expected Jesus to install. Jesus was installing a spiritual kingdom, and, and Judas had wanted him to install a political uh, kingdom or a, a physical kingdom. So the question to you and I could be that um, how is this in our lives? Perhaps there is a time when Jesus hasn't performed for us in the way that we have wanted him to perform. Perhaps he didn't heal or he didn't provide or he didn't um, protect in the ways that we expected. And so we have a sense of disappointment with God. Well, Judas uh, decided to take matters into his own hand. And, and whether he was motivated to try to uh, force Jesus' hand or manipulate him into doing what he wanted to do, uh, Judas was going to um, decide that he was going to take matters into his own hand. Maybe he just wanted at least to get some kind of personal benefit or return for all the years he had spent in ministry, giving three years of his life to Jesus. And before he lost that all, he thought he would get something back for him. But uh, what about us in, in our lives? Are there times when uh, we've taken matters into our own hands, when we weren't uh, appreciating what God was doing or God wasn't moving fast enough in our lives and perhaps we took steps to fix the problem or advance the timetable or get things together faster? 
But in doing so, Judas kind of dumped the agenda of Jesus to propel his own agenda. And as a result, he realized in the end that a few bucks wasn't worth it, wasn't worth the trade. What he thought would be to his advantage in the end wasn't, and he took his life. Well, how about you and I? Have there been times when others might have considered us as fair weather fans or times when we have heard ourselves think or say that the grass is greener on the other side or that we would do things out of our own selfish gain or look out for ourselves because we were concerned about being left empty handed or I can get more money with this contract or what I want to get out of life in the end is more important than what I think God wants me to get out of my life. Friends, there are many different ways that we can experience this, but um, we can be quick to change our loyalties at times when God isn't performing the way that we want. We can quickly go from uh, having Jesus as our master or our Lord to ourselves becoming our master or our Lord. And we rely on our own ideas, our own strength, and uh, our own methods in order to get what we think would be the most out of life. In the end, we're essentially saying that our way is better than God's way. And when someone other than Jesus has more influence over our lives than Jesus, then we have essentially delivered ourselves over to and aligned with the enemy. Our agenda is a giant that must fall because it steadily robs us of all that God intends for our lives. It's a betrayal of Jesus' rightful place in our lives as Lord of our lives. In communion, we have the, the opportunity on a regular basis to be reminded that uh, this is good news, good news of redemption. Because Jesus knew the giant of our agenda in our lives and he designed a meal that, that we would remember to always come back to him. And every time we come to the communion table, we have that opportunity to commit or to recommit our lives to Christ to say that not our agenda, but God's agenda would be primary. Judas was at the table and Jesus still served him. There was the betrayer right in front of him and he served him. There were the disciples that he knew would deny him and he still served them. There was the knowledge of knowing that later in the evening, all of them would flee, and yet he still served them. And he said his work that he was about to do the following day would be the work of redemption, and that he was establishing a new covenant, but that his blood would be poured out for each one of us for the forgiveness of sins.